This is a meeting organized by Jews for Justice for Palestinians to welcome uh, and to be extremely honored by the presence of Raja Shahada here, who won the Orwell Prize for his book, Palestinian Walks. Raja is a writer and a lawyer in Palestine based in Ramallah. The book, as you will find out, chronicles the history of the conflict in the West Bank through the history of walking, rambling, taking a sarha, as Raja puts it, in the hills around Ramallah, and the increasing difficulties that the expanding occupation has put in the way of ordinary leisure activity. And Roger will talk about the changes that have taken place over time since his childhood walking in the hills. Can I just add that Roger is the author of a number of very interesting and important books, Strangers in the House, When the Bulbul Stopped Singing, a Diary of Ramallah on the Siege, which was when I first read Roger's works, and of course, books about the law. Uh, Roger will no doubt interweave uh, elements of the law into our conversation. The way we're structuring it is that I will be in conversation with Raja. He has given me some prepared questions. I have said uh, I don't like those and changed some. Raja has agreed and we're going to have a conversation and see how it goes. Afterwards, we have copies of the book. Raja will sign them. We're selling them at eight pounds. They're seven ninety-nine in the shop. And if you insist, you can get your penny change. <laughs> but of each eight pounds, four pounds, through the courtesy of the publisher's profile books, who are here this evening, four pounds will be given to Alhak, the civil rights organization affiliate of the International Commission of Jurists, which Raja is a co-founder of, back I think in 82 or somewhere around there. 79, 79. So without further ado, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to hope that the microphone is long enough to reach me so I can ask questions through it. And Roger will respond. Uh, just. Just. Right. Fine, just to say through the microphone to Roger and to me, you need to hold the microphone incredibly close to your mouth, much closer than you expect. Okay, I'm going to pass, well, I'm going to ask Roger a question, which is to start off by telling us what a saha is. I think the closest English word for it is, is rambling, the concept. When he first started taking sarhat in the hills around Ramallah, and what the hills and the environment of Palestine meant to him as a boy growing up in the area. I first want to thank uh, Jews for Justice for this invitation and uh, to say how happy I am to be talking to you. I have many friends amongst uh, the audience and it's very nice to people again. Uh, uh, of course, we would speak about various things and then there would be a chance to uh, have a further discussion with everybody here. Uh, I grew up in uh, Ramallah and in, it so happened that in every house that I lived in, the uh, hills were in the foreground. So I grew up with the, with the, always with the side of the hills. I didn't walk as a child. We went for picnics in the spring, but not to walk in, in, in the hills. But I always uh, uh, heard people say they're going for a sarha. And uh, I also heard that my uh, grandfather, was, who was a judge in many times, and he died before I was born, uh, used to enjoy going into the hills and staying with a cousin of his who was a stonemason and who had one of these qasirs which are stone structures in the hills and uh, spending uh, some time out in the open and it, it always attracted my imagination and attention how did that happen and how did they do it 
And uh, so I always wished to go on Sahar. I started walking in the hills in, uh, toward the end of the 70s, after I finished with my law studies in this country. And uh, I started exploring the hills. Going on the Sahar is going without aim. Uh, going to rejuvenate yourself, to have communion with nature, without uh, a restriction of time and space. It's like a drug-free high Palestinian style. Uh, so if, if, you, if you have a purpose, if you have a time limit, it can't be a sarha. And I think in a way the book moves from a sarha to a suffocation. Because it was only in the first two walks that I described in the book, which take place around 79 and mid-80s, that it was possible in the Ramallah Hills to go on sarha because there were no, or very, there was only one Israeli settlement uh, that made life difficult. And in the last walk, uh, the sixth walk, which takes place around 2006, before I had to take a walk, I had to very carefully consider where I can walk because there were so many settlements that were built around, and as it turns out, I couldn't avoid confrontation with the settler, and that's how the book ends. Before asking you to expand on that, could I just ask you to give us a bit of a feel of what the hills and the countryside in the West Bank were like, and how they compare with your experience of walking in England and Scotland, where I know you've just returned from. Uh, well, they are as beautiful, but in an entirely different way than, uh, than the landscape in, in Britain, whether Scotland or, or England. Uh, Palestine does not have mountains, it has hills, and there are low hills, and uh, uh, it is, of course, a very small area, and uh, very varied area, so it depends where you are. In the hills around Ramallah, for example, uh, it, it, there are rather steep hills with narrow valleys, which are narrow valleys. Uh, they become very green in the spring, and, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, it rains from November, to April, if we're lucky. Uh, now it's getting to be less and less rain, and, and more, uh, there's more drought this year. And then from April, and sometimes it's fortunate enough that it would rain in May, but that is unusual. So we can say from May until November, there'll be no rain whatsoever. So only the succulents, some thorns, uh, are, can survive. Uh, there, there's also, um, as, uh, of course, olive trees. And the most important feature of the hills is that they are all terraced. Uh, so if people have visited uh, some parts of Tuscany, maybe it's similar, but much greener in Tuscany because much, there's much more rain. Uh, so the olive trees are a feature. In the Malba hills, there used to be vine vineyards, and uh, uh, that would have made the hills look green in the summer. But then all the vineyards were killed by virus, and they were never replanted. 